Hi, welcome to RC Kicks at Force Raceway. Yes, so RC Kicks had its first meet at Force Raceway this weekend and it went fantastic. I had a brilliant time. Thank you to everybody who turned up and brought all their cool cars. It blew me away. We had so much variation of RC cars on the track. Formula One cars, pan cars, clob busters, two wheel drive, four wheel drive, vintage, new, you name it. It was basically thrown on the track and driven and yes, some of it did get a bit broken, even things like dinosaurs. Yeah, sorry about that. But I think everyone had a good time. We did a quiz, we did some raffles. Pick me one, and then. Yeah, and pick me another one as well. The second one. Yeah, built. So we got first one. First one's the top one. Mark! 37. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at this. Fix. So, Mark, you can take your pick. You should have one. I knew I should have waited before I got my tickets. Come here. He was right after me. Come on, me. Hey. You. Come on, me. Which one do you like? That's yours. Go on. Yes. So in this video, we're going to cover some of the highlights. And the first one was me talking to a guy called Mark, who, well, put it this way, he knows his stuff about his RC10s and some of his collection is probably the best in the country. So it uh, puts mine to shame. Unfortunately, this one is being packed to go off to its new owner and hopefully I can replace it with a world's car. So if you've got a new inbox world's car or a built but mint one, drop an email to Gavin Evans at rckicks.com as I may take it off your hands for reasonable money, obviously. Right, let's cut over to Mark. That one there, you'll recognise that. That's a, a, an RC10 uh, circular, about 85, 86, this one, but obviously this is quite heavily modified. Um, but it's modified with period correct. 
well, essentially parts. Um, so the chassis is rather underneath. It's basically on run condition. Yeah. Um, and the arms, are Andy's arms. Yeah, oh, the, yeah Andy's I've heard of them. I've heard of them. Yeah. yeah. And then the transmission. Oh is, yeah. That's a yeah. that's a lethal weapon transmission. Oh, by, I know that one. By ENL, so that's oh, a right. belt drive transmission. Oh, right. Of the time, so yeah. that's a period upgrade. Um, so it's this is probably my most heavily modified, modified RC10. Period correct. Modified. And it's that was built to take the same place as the six gear. So you yeah. can say this is only this is a six gear only chassis. Yeah. So it's early, and that's what that was. That was what that would upgrade was for. Run. Yeah. And then it runs the way. They are Loas wheels, which I've never seen those. Yeah, they're, they're basically um, a reproduction of Tenacraft, so yeah. te te Technocrafts. Um, but he made these about 12, 10, 12 years ago. He did a limit run of 105 sets, and I was fortunate enough to get two of them, two full sets. But they are nice, they, they certainly finish up. Is it two piece? Three. Three. Um, so they're also different. Uh, you can adjust the offsets on them as well, fully adjustable on offsets. Uh, you take them apart. And you put you put extra um, rings in oh, to push it to push it in or out so you can change the offset completely on it. Um, so yeah, but as you can see, shoppers are pretty much you know unrubbed and yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a really nice. about example. getting a pro painter to paint. I've got yeah. a, I've had a body done. Yeah. So I actually had a body painted by so. You, there's a guy called Andy Jacobs and Andy Jacobs used to paint bodies for oh, an associate yeah. back in the day. Right, and you, you, you see some of them are signed Andy's, Andy's bodies, right? The, the, the RC10 guys are, are well in with it. Yeah. Now, I've got one of those to go on here. Um, so, yes, yeah, so that one will be getting a painted body. It's already done it at home. I just haven't got it yet. And a massive thank you to Mark for sharing all that knowledge that he's got on his beautiful cars. Not jealous, not at all. Next up is someone you may already know, and it's Andy Robinson from Andy Robinson RC, talking about his new 2022 Astute that he's taking racing, as well as the TD4, also covering some of his more rarer vintage parts. Yeah. Hey, you know Fine. Yeah. I love it it's compared to the TD4. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I must admit that. Yeah. yeah. It's. You had, yeah. They had problems on the TD4 with the front drive shaft. Yeah. Binging out at full turn. Yeah. Which is a bit of a weird. One. I mean, in the end, I managed to solve it. Yeah. You changed the front drive shaft. I, I put the uh, universal drive shafts in. And I put some shims in there. And I got it to, yeah. to stay. But the biggest problem I've now found with it is. The transmission, yeah. all the all the crown gears that come off the the prop shaft, it's eating them. Yeah. It's, if you run it on a flat surface, yeah. there's no problem. But you start taking it on a track and you're coming off the jumps. I've gone through two sets, and really, wow. yeah, two sets. And the thing, I mean, you know, I know you can build things not correct and make yeah. silly mistakes, but I've been through that car yeah. plenty of times now. It's right, it's still doing. Yeah, but I think part of the problem is is it's. It's four wheel drive, so it's nose heavy. Yeah. And the whole thing's a lot heavier than this. Yeah. And the two wheel drive jump better. So you are gonna land a yeah. lot flatter. And I don't think it'll put the same stress on the transmission. Yeah. So far it's been, it's been, it's been loads better. Yeah. I mean I put the slipper in so I didn't want to stress the gears yeah. out. But it's, it's loads better. You know. But uh, they're very happy with it so far. Yeah, they did a couple of um, nitro versions of it as well, yeah. I've never seen one. Never seen one. I mean, it says, hey, they've got air, they're air shocks on them. They're, nice. they're not oil filled at all. Oh, it's just, oh, it's just, just yeah. fish in the air then. Yeah. Oh, no. To be honest, it, it works. works. It works surprisingly well. Yeah, that is quite smooth, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, a lot of the racers, when they did, they did race, they still changed them for oil, traditional oh. oil shocks. But they don't work that bad, actually. No. You know. And they used to lock the rear. The rear steering as well. Oh, in the yeah. end, you locked it for racing yeah. because it because of the wandering. You, you, you yeah, you never get it to be pinched on. No. A massive thank you to Andy for taking the time to come and join us at the RC Kicks Me. It was lovely to meet you, and thank you for letting me check out some of your cool RC. Not jealous at all. Anyway, as you know, we don't take ourselves too seriously at RC Kicks, so we celebrate all types of RC, including uh, the crashing. And over the weekend, there was two people that really had that skill, and that was Stu and Dylan. And I have to say, over the whole weekend, Dylan, your hot shot. I feel sorry for it. Good luck. It only needs a new chassis, new body, new wing, new wing mount. And I'm sure it was steering because there must have been something broken with the steering. Anyway, congratulations. And lastly, we've got Best Crash. 
So we've got Stu, you are the winner for best class. Thank you. Well done. Still in one piece, thankfully. Thank you very much. So there you go, just a few highlights of a very busy weekend. In a minute, I'm going to do a montage of all the other bits and pieces because obviously, if I packed it in, this video would be hours long. A massive thank you to everybody who came along, especially as it was the first one, so no one really knew what it was going to be like. But I think we found a bit of a sweet spot where you can come and drive pretty much any RC that's one tenth or smaller on an indoor track, and it's friendly, no pressure, and we got to spend a lot of time on the track, so I think people really enjoyed that one. And uh, we will be doing another one again. Hopefully, we're going to find a track down south that's indoor track that we could hold the same sort of thing again. Ideally, I would love to do this every six months, so to have a, a one down south and then another one up north, and then basically do them as the years go on. That would be fantastic as they grow. Um, so if you know anybody that's got an indoor track down south somewhere, tell them to contact me as I would love to firm up a date for later in the year, around October time, to do it again. Thanks very much, enjoy the montage, and I'll see you soon. For the love of RC, till next time.